All right, guys, how's it going? Another video here, CDL Talk with Ton. Uh, today, we're uh, mostly actually speaking to Vortex from Oglis, who just recently won the Open, of course, here in Europe at the weekend. Came setting the challenges elite as well. Let, let's just break down how they've been going so far throughout the year of Cold War. It, it, things have been looking pretty good, obviously, a bit of a slow start, but they have very much got things going towards the end. Uh, specifically, Vortex is a, is a player I've known for quite some time. He's from the same area as I am. I, I often travel to events with him or well I did when events existed um, but nonetheless uh, he's a good friend of mine so I thought I'd bring him for a chat after his team started to do really really well in the Cold War uh, just to give you an example of his, his achievements if you're unaware I mean Modern Warfare looked nice I mean the, these boys did really really well obviously as part of Team War and then of course uh, through Black Ops 4 he did well as part of Team War once again specifically towards the end uh, top 12 actually they finished uh, and it could have been higher really really could have been I remember that one um, obviously having a good year of things there but so far so good obviously in cold war as well but i said we had a chance to speak to steve so let's jump into that conversation right now so uh steve obviously wait, okay, like, hold on i'm double checking that everything's running right double yeah check, okay because this is the second time we're going through this and i don't want to have to do it again. <laughs> i've got to boy, we're good i know you got scrims in an hour we'll, we'll get there i'm sure um so first and foremost, uh, Vortex, of course, uh, you in the Ogler squad have been looking really, really good on the challenger side of things for the CDL. A bit of a different setup this year, of course, with Elite Challengers, then the Opens. The, the, there's a lot of money on the line for everybody. Uh, how happy are you and how? what do you think the general consensus is about the setup here for Challengers this year? Yeah, I think they've nailed it. Like, they've got the um, format spot on, the, the Cups as well as like a league, but giving everyone a chance to get in this league with the being mm. five seasons, it's a really good uh, setup. And yeah, the only real complaint I could possibly have is maybe it's like only getting 20% of the prize pool of the winners at champs. Mm. If the, if it's the same as what it is last year, which I think it is, I think I saw that somewhere. But like, I, I mean, with the rest of the money, you can't really complain about that. Yeah, I, I mean, look, we'll, if we could touch on last year, obviously you did very, very well on that Team War squad. Obviously, I, I, top of my head, it's only kind of you left. I know that Harry was in there at one point, yeah. uh, which I always find funny because we always like, because of you being currently Orglis, as, as the team name says, we always refer to you as X War. And I keep saying, we can't really do this anymore. It's literally you now. <laughs> it's literally yeah, you. There's nobody it's, else. It's me and Harry, really, but Harry was like the second half, probably the most successful half, in fairness, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll get uh, an orc soon. But yeah. yeah. Always, if not, there's plenty of money to be won. Oh god, I. Plenty of money. That there'll be one the percentage of no doubt. Um. Right. Let's move into it then, because you know we, we've said that the elite side of things look good. You and your team last year performed really, really well. Uh, ultimately, being the best team within Europe overall. I know you guys in SNG sort of chopped and changed, but towards the latter stages when it kind of mattered, you guys were on top. Moving into this year, things have got the ball rolling a little bit now for you after maybe a little bit of a slow start. Looking at the franchise teams, and I don't know how much time you had to watch any of the CDL and look, sort of see where, where everything has been lying, but who do you think that you boys could beat in the CDL? Um, I think it's it's hard to say, but I think we could beat a few few teams. I think the main reason being is I think we'd just be better at S&D and then... And we well, we, we are capable of winning respawns against pros. I've done it plenty of times in the past. Um, I, I don't think, you know, it's, it's hard to say like, oh yeah, we're going to beat FaZe and Dallas and all these teams like they're just outrageously good. And mm -hmm. it's different It's different watched into playing against them. Like, you can know everything in the in the world and if they're just outslaying you by 30 kills, you've not got a chance. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, say, I'd say at the minute three or four and then maybe it's a bit more as the year goes on. Like, that's how I felt last year as well. Yeah, well, that, that was my opportunity to maybe get a little clip of, of you talking shit about some of the uh, franchise teams. So that unfortunately hasn't went yeah. the way I wanted. Um, <laughs> but you boys, obviously, as just mentioned, had a bit of a slower start. But I know something that you mentioned in the past is that, you know, you find yourself growing into games a little bit more. What what do you think your slow start was, was down to? And obviously, we know roster change came through. Was that really it? Or was it just a case of learning the game and it was just hard to pick it up initially? Um, well, so like last year we, we we had a decently hot start, um, but that game was completely different, and you had to learn a whole new spawn system, which I think which is why we took off because I adapted to that quite fast. Um, this year, normal year, it's it's just it's always the case. Everyone's got like tenfolds of motivation. Everyone's going dumb hard at the start. 
playing excessive hours, what even watching people, uh, but people tend to fall off from doing that. The game goes on and like adapting the game and working out the best way to play things, and I think that's just where I excel as the game goes on because I, I don't, I don't stop, so I just keep getting better. Like not, not as an individual, I'd, I'd hope, but also like helping my team get better, and uh, and jo Josh is like that as well. So like we've got like two of us doing it this year. It, it seemed like a really good move for me when I learned that Josh was coming back. And in terms of our slow start, like general slow start, like that that is the reason for it. But also I do feel like the main AR role isn't really a thing. Like the slow AR role that we've had in the last three years, I don't think it works like that in this game. Um, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but we picked up Harry who's not a main AR and yeah. Josh isn't technically a main AR and it's worked out for us. Maybe it's down to the M4 meta, but it wasn't working for us with the Krig meta either. So which is why I felt like we needed a change. Yeah, I I think it could potentially, you know, just be sort of like it goes team to team because we've seen Dave and Cody, they did pretty decent uh, when he when he moved over to Connect Four, and I'd argue maybe you know your stiffest competition and Rams have a have a very slow AR in yeah. Nvidia and in fairness, <laughs> who who I will say I heavily criticised at the beginning of the game whenever I watched them play, he was always behind, but I feel as if he's definitely got better. I don't know if you share that sentiment, but Rams have definitely been a team who have been there with you guys. Yeah. Um it's different for each team, right? So Nvidia plays a role where he's just basically playing like he's always rotating, he's always on it, he's always just ha like making, doing the things that Journey, Metals, and Lucky need him to do. So they them three can run around and, and they're unbelievable at doing that, picking mm -hmm. up kills when they're on their game. Especially Journey, Journey and Metals. Lucky's quite smart, so he he can help Nvidia and he can help them. He do whatever's needed. But when you've got Journey and Metals Fry and it make it, it's like you need someone like Nvidian. Uh I think our team composition's a bit different, especially with me and Josh on the team. We, we need someone that's gonna set a bit like a bit more pace and, and get more kills. It's always been the case with me and Josh on the same team. Um and I knew that coming into it. Um But I just feel like it like we just weren't getting enough out of like Dave in terms of mm. kills and he was doing like the stuff Nvidia would do, but we just needed a bit more, which is why we got Harry in. Yeah, I, I was going to touch on obviously uh, Dave being dropped and Harry being brought in, and um, obviously like I, I'm sometimes privy to some information of when things are going on because obviously we're good mates and stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, nice. we don't get to travel together at, at the minute and haven't <laughs> done in quite some time. <laughs> uh, but at the oh. same time, uh, obviously, as far as I was aware, you didn't have a replacement lined up for Dave immediately. Obviously, it, there would have been names on your mind. How did you manage to convince Harry to come over? Because at the time, it could be argued that Obtained were probably doing a little bit better than you were. Well, yeah, they were doing a lot better. They had got back-to-back -back seconds and I think they'd won one. Something like that, they'd only really lost to Rams. Mm. So, um, yeah, it was like, I think anyone else would have said no. But I know Harry, like, trusts me and we've obviously had a lot of success when he joined mm. me last year from when he was, like, doing rubbish last year. Um, took a bit of groveling. <laughs> a couple of hours he was in yeah yeah i, I mean, yeah, I mean like i say it was from the outside looking in it was probably a bad decision for like oh people wouldn't understand it and that's what it, i think that's what he mostly was worried about what people would think about it and what if what if it went wrong and what would people think of him and that but i mean i told him you just can't think like that though you, you, you need to do what's best for you and what you think's best for you and he did and i, I mean it's worked out because since that point i mean like the first week of elite challenge i was in you know, even as somebody who is sometimes biased towards you and your teams, it's like, I, for me, I was looking at it and I sort of had you mid-pack in Elite Challengers. I, 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 that, that's sort of where I had you. But to see you come out 4-0 and straight away, I, I mean, everyone was like, oh, shit. I mean, this this is now a problem because <laughs> obviously you played well. Oh, yeah. We um we were really happy with how that, obviously, the first day was, we, we knew we'd gone into the second day. We should win them two games hmm. but the first day we, we were looking to come out one and one we had s and g who were like still good at the time mm -hmm. and uh well as his team with hydra so we knew we had like we needed to come out hot and we were really happy with the four no start and then going into week three it was a bit of a disaster lost to rams again last map and mm -hmm. then got ran through straight away by um house it's off but yeah um i think we were still learning a lot about what we need to do as a team at that point and i think since the elite playoffs and even during the elite playoffs like that's when we've, we've really started to reach like a full potential and hopefully we just keep going carrying it forward like we did last year and don't get complacent 
yeah, uh, obviously if things go as well as last year went, then you will be looking very, very good throughout the rest of the year, <laughs> of course. Um, obviously Rams have been the ones that have been uh, with you. I know a lot of rosters are in the middle of change and et cetera, et cetera. Is there anybody in particular you're kind of looking out for now? I know House Tarth have just announced that Trey is going over to their side of things. So that that's an interesting roster to look at. So yeah, I mean, House Tarth, like, I've always been a good team and they just lose to people they shouldn't lose to. Mm. Um, or just get put themselves in weird situations where they, they've just got too much to do in tournaments or yeah. like in the elite play elite playoffs they had to they had to beat Rams to get in and j they just they just shouldn't be in them positions. But like when they actually play us, like they match up quite well against us and like they're they're a good team and we always have really good series against them. So they've always been like up there with us and Rams. And then um, other than that, you just we we'll just have to see how the new rosters form. Uh, they're the, they're the main two that I'd be worried about at the minute though. Mm. So let's move on to the, the, the final part of it. Uh, obviously, uh, expansion to the CDL is something that a lot of people have talked about. As a four, maybe specifically, or, or, or for yourself, what, what do you think it takes for a challenger in Europe to get himself on a franchise team? Um, well, firstly, not being in the middle of a pandemic. But that does help. That, I. <laughs> yeah. you, got, you obviously got Marcus, but they've, they've probably got longer term plans for Marcus. Um, mm -hmm. With him being so young, that is a big factor. Being young, uh, fresh, like being fresh, like new, new talent. They see you fry and like mechanically, like good slaying, um, and just I think they're looking for more for people that they can mold into the player they want to be, which mm -hmm. is fair enough. Like someone like me, I've been about ages. I'm already got this. Like people have already think they know what I'm like and. They hopefully I'm not don't necessarily... remember World War Two. <laughs> no, <long>. no, <laughs> yeah, no, that, that game didn't happen. <laughs> I wasn't in the league on that game. But now, nah, like, I don't really fit into that category of being like a top slayer, mechanically gifted, uh, young, or anything like that. So, I think it would take a lot longer for me to get in the league. Um, it would need to expand. I think I knew that since the start, though. Um, but so I'm willing to be patient, and especially with the way the challenges is, there's, there's not exactly not a lot of money to play for now. So. It's fine by me. I'll, I'll wait until I get my turn again. Um, that's by, fine by me. I think for someone like Harry and and Byron, nasty on my team, that they're like probably going to be looked at quite a lot and had close have close eyes on them for the rest of the season, and they'll be, put themselves in a good spot if we continue to do well. Which I'm sure you will. At this point, you know, when you guys start to get set up and start to win tournaments, that's when uh, you do become scary. Because just winning the most recent Open, second in Elite Challengers, you definitely seem to be the team to beat in Europe. But uh, plenty more to come, of course, from you boys. Elite Challengers starts very, very soon. Of course, you're automatically qualified for Season 2. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in that. Stay uh, cheers. cheers for the chat.